Hello, everybody, and welcome back to SFF 180. It is Monday morning, the 28th of January. End of a month already. Wow. And time once again for the mailbag. And we have a really good one this week, you guys. I count 12 packages, uh, some of which are like nice big boxes. So hopefully we've got some really good stuff this week. So we'll get right into those in a minute. Announcements first. Coming up here in a few hours, we have the official announcement for the fifth BookTube SFF Awards. Wow. I mean, amazing to think this is like the fifth year of doing it. This little idea that we had uh, in you know, as a lark. And uh, we're still, it's still going on. You know, you would think that these kinds of things, you know, they're the sort of things that booktubers might get interested in doing, and you might do it for a year or two, and then everybody would sort of go their way and lose interest, but that hasn't actually happened. The awards have just sort of kept going. Judges have come and gone as necessary, you know, uh, you know as, as per their availability and their life obligations. That's an obvious thing, but the awards have kept up. Um, I think I am the only judge now remaining from year one. Uh, Elizabeth is still on board as our admin, and she has said this year that if she has time, because she might have time, uh, she may judge in a category or two, but she's mainly our admin now. Uh, Caitlin has left this year, uh, unfortunately, uh, but we have some new folks that I will be announcing at the announcements, which will be at 11 a.m. Central today, Everyone is doing simultaneous announcements, as we've done before, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, otherwise, apart from the, um, you know, the routine reminder that uh, Hugo eligibility, SFF 180 in the FanCast category, that's a thing. And, of course, February is coming up. And as I've announced, I will be doing, um, as part of a celebration of Black History Month, the vast majority of my reviews during the month, and I've been, like, really kind of knuckling down and trying to read ahead, uh, will be of books by black authors, including uh, quite a few episodes of SFF 180 classics are going to happen uh, during the month of February, uh, dealing with one particular writer uh, who has left an amazing legacy, and so I'll be discussing some of that. Uh, there may be a couple of reviews that, uh, you know, do not kind of fall into that category of new books that I know people are still looking out for, and leftover stuff that I read in January that I've still got to get the reviews up for, but most of the reviews will be celebrating Black History Month. I'm very excited to get into that. Um, all right, then. I guess that's it. <laughs> that's it for announcements. So, uh, without further ado, let's dig into these books. All right, the first one of these is, um, is a package that comes from a company in Washington called Grim Oak Press. Am I familiar with Grim Oak Press? I don't know. I don't know. Wow! Holy cow! Well, if I wasn't familiar with Grim Oak Press before, I definitely am now. Uh, this is an arc for a massive new epic fantasy anthology called Unfettered 3. I have not seen volumes 1 or 2, but this is the third one. And uh, it says it is coming out March the 19th, and it describes itself as New Tales by Masters of Fantasy. Okay. Uh, and the premise of this, let me see, do I, is there a cell sheet? No, there's like a letter in front. Um, okay. All right. Well, it describes itself as basically the, the whole inspiration for this was lacking health insurance when he was diagnosed with cancer. Sean Speakman, who is the editor of this anthology, asked friends in the science fiction and fantasy writing community to donate short stories he could publish to counter mounting medical debt. The result was unfettered. I guess Unfettered 1, uh, an anthology offering tales from some of the best authors working today. Now in Unfettered 3, Speakman continues to pay for the aid he received, raising money to combat medical debt for artists and authors. Oh, what, a, what an awesome thing to do. He has garnered together, gathered together a stellar mix of new and favorite writers, free to write what they choose, and the result is a powerful new anthology, perfect for all readers. Huh. Okay, and I'm not lying. There's uh, there's some serious names involved with this one. Um, Callie Bates, Lev Grossman, Mark Lawrence, uh, Delilah Dawson, Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson, Terry Brooks, David Anthony Durham, Shauna McGuire, Mark Turner, John Gwynn, Deborah Wolf, Todd Lockwood, Robert V. S. Reddick, Anna Stevens, Peter Orulian, Cat Rambo, Ken Scholes, Megan Lindholm, aka Robin Hobb, Ted Williams, Scott Sigler, Carrie Vaughn, Patrick Swenson, Ramon Terrell. Anna Smith-Spark, Jason Denzel, um, 
Robert Jordan and Brandon Sanderson. So that's uh, Brandon doing a new Wheel of Time tale, I guess. Naomi Novik, and then Sean Speakman, the uh, the final uh, story. Holy mackerel. Now that is definitely a, a gallery of writers. Anyway, Unfettered 3 uh, happens from Grim Oak Press on March the 19th. Okay, and then next up I have something that looks like it is probably from the Hatchet Group, because it's in one of these infuriating vacuum sealed... Actually, you know what? These are a pain in the ass to open, but they really protect the books. I'll say that. And this is a copy from Orbit of No Way, a new book by S.J. Morden, and it's the sequel to a book from last year called One Way. And the uh, premise behind One Way was, I guess, this fellow is a criminal who uh, decides to serve out his time doing hard labor on Mars uh, for some corporate interests and discovers that, uh, like, they're really, really bad guys and corrupt as all hell, and he decides to stand against that. And now No Way, I suppose, is the sequel to those adventures. Um, and I had, there's a slip of paper in here, but it does not tell me uh, the release date for this, but I'm going to assume that it is probably a February release. Um, I've actually been intrigued uh, by the concept of this. I like Mars stories. Uh, this one seems like it's a little bit more grim, dark, and uh, brutal than, you know, something like The Martian. So I've been looking forward to getting into these. If you've read One Way, let me know about it in the comments. But No Way is coming out now from Orbit Books. And next up is from good old Random Penguin. And this is the finished copy of Gates of Stone by Angus McAllen. Uh, this comes out from Ace Books on the 19th of February. And uh, this is, uh, again, it wants to be compared to Game of Thrones, but this is Asian-influenced fantasy. And Angus McAllen um, is a, actually a British writer, but he uh, was born in China. And uh, he spent uh, most of his early life uh, all throughout Asia. And uh, so, uh, and says he's awarded a master's degree with honors in social anthropology by the University of Edinburgh, partly based in his fieldwork in Indonesia. Okay, fascinating. Uh, so he has actually done academic work uh, on, like, the legends of some of these cultures. And now he has an epic fantasy novel, a uh, first novel in the Lord of the Islands series. Just before her 16th birthday, Princess Katarina is refused her rightful place as heir to the Empire of the Ice Bear solely because of her sex. I mean, who wouldn't want to be in charge of something called the Empire of the Ice Bear? God knows I would. Determined to regain her inheritance, she murders the foreign lord she's been ordered to marry and embarks on a perilous voyage to the lush tropical islands of Lot Basar in search of vast wealth and power she needs to claim the empire for herself. On a small island kingdom, Prince Arjun's idyllic life is shattered when a malignant sorcerer invades, slaughters his people, and steals the sacred sword of Jun's ancestors. With his royal father dead and his palace in ruins, Jun reluctantly tracks the sorcerer and the magical blade far across the pirate-infested waters of the Lot Basar. Long ago, the powerful relics known as the Seven Keys were used to safely lock away the terrifying evils of the Seven Hells. With Jun's ancient sword in his grasp, the sorcerer Manku has claimed the first key and begun his mission to unleash catastrophe upon the land, as the destinies of these three entwine in the lawless lands of the Lut Basar, or Lot Basar, I guess, uh, the fate of humanity hangs in the balance, for if the sorcerer cannot be stopped, the world will be unmade. All right, so they have to get the horcruxes before he does. Understood. Um, this sounds like it could be action-packed and a lot of fun. I remember getting the arc for this, and you guys responded to it really well at the time. But, again, Gates of Stone, Angus McAllen, debut novel, and it comes out February the 19th. And here's something else from Hatchet. Cool. All right, I am extremely excited to see this. Was not expecting it. Uh, this is the arc for one of the books that was in my anticipated fantasy list for this year. Uh, Seven Blades in Black by Sam Sykes. And let's see, this comes out April the 9th uh, from Orbit, and it says, um, Sal, once a talented mage, thrived in a wasteland scarred by generations of magical warfare, caught between two powerful empires. But Sal has been betrayed by those she trusted most and is now in captivity, stripped of her magic and awaiting her execution on order of the emperor himself. All she has left is her vengeance, her will, and her weapons. Okay, then. So, uh... Yeah, this is, uh, looks like it's going to be a nice, action-packed, bloody-as-hell tale of revenge. And it is available April the 9th from Orbit. Big one, too. It's like 660 pages, so cool. Well, this makes me very happy to have 
This is Finder by Suzanne Palmer. And again, it's another book from one of my anticipated videos. Uh, this comes out April the 2nd, I believe it says. Yes, it is. Um, science fiction novel by uh, the author of The Secret Life of Bots, which I believe won the Hugo for Best Novelette last year. And so what do we have here? Uh, Fergus Ferguson has been called a lot of names. Thief, con artist, repo man. He prefers the term Finder. His latest job should be simple. Find the spacecraft Venetia's sword and steal it back from Arum Gilger, an ex-nobleman turned power-hungry trade boss. He'll slip in, decode the ship's compromised AI security, and get out of town, sword in hand. Fergus locates both Gilger and the ship in the farthest corner of human-inhabited space, a gas-giant harvesting colony called Cerny. But Fergus's arrival at the colony is anything but simple. A cable car explosion launches Cerny into civil war, and Fergus must ally with Gilger's enemies to navigate a field of space mines and a small army of hostile mercenaries. What was supposed to be a routine job evolves into negotiating a power struggle between factions. Even worse, Fergus has become increasingly and inconveniently invested in the lives of the locals. It doesn't help that a dangerous alien species, thought mythical, proves unsettlingly real. Their ominous triangle ships keep following Fergus around. Foolhardy, eccentric, reckless, whatever he's called, Fergus will need all the help he can get to take back the sword and maybe save Cerny from destruction in the process. Um, this just sounds like an absolute heap of fun. And it will be out on April the 2nd from Ace Books. Find, no, Daw Books, excuse me. Uh, Finder by Suzanne Palmer. Let me know in the comments. And moving on down the list, package from Harper Collins. Okay, and this is a delight to have. This is the finished copy and hardcover of The Kingdom of Copper uh, by S.A. Chakraborty. It's the sequel to City of Brass, which is very popular. Last year, it was a finalist in BookTube SFF Awards for Best Debut, but it lost out to Baron the Nightingale. Uh, but this is out. This came out this past week, past Tuesday, on the 22nd. And um, let's see. I don't really want to give away any spoilers, but uh, this is the second book of the Divabad trilogy, and navigating her way through this otherworldly dangerous realm of court politics and ever-shifting alliances is more dangerous than even the most complex grift this former con artist ever ran on the streets of Cairo. So yes, I am trying to get to this very, very soon. You know, I read City of Brass uh, for the Book Do Best FF Awards at the time, but I never actually got my review up. It's all like in notes form, so I should, I need to write up that review and then do this one, and then just, like, do them both back-to-back, -back, I guess. So, this is like me being a slacker. It happens all the time. But, Kingdom of Copper, out now from Harper Voyager as a lovely hardcover edition. All right, well, the arcs keep coming in. Uh, this is a new one, again, from Daw. Comes out on April the 16th, and it's a new book by Mike Resnick. Uh, whose work I have enjoyed over the years. Uh, here it is. It's the first book in a new portal fantasy trilogy that takes readers through space and time, including the beloved worlds of many pop culture staples, as Eddie Raven tries to outrun the dark forces pursuing him. Yeah, Mike has been nominated for the Hugo 37 times. He's won five times. And uh, let's see, in The Master of Dreams, Eddie Raven isn't quite sure what's happening to him. And he's in a race to find out before it kills him. His adventures begin with a shooting in a very strange shop in Manhattan. But soon he finds himself the owner of a very familiar bar in Casablanca. By the time he adjusts to that reality, he's suddenly become one of several people helping a young woman search for a wizard. And after confronting the wizard, he somehow finds himself in Camelot. But as he rushes to solve the mystery of his many appearances... A larger threat looms, because someone or something is stalking him through time and space with deadly intent. Interesting, so he is going to a bunch of uh, alternate universes that are based on fictional worlds, it sounds like. It sounds like a more intelligently realized, perhaps, uh, version of what Robert Heinlein tried to come up with in a terrible book called The Number of the Beast. Uh, Heinlein came up with this concept called fictons, which were exactly that, right? They were alternate universes, but they were based on fictional, uh, you know, universes. So, you know, he had his characters would travel to Barsoom and uh, Oz and places like that, right? So hopefully this handles that basic premise much better. But uh, Master of Dreams comes out April the 16th from Daw Books. Let me know in the comments. And this one comes in from Simon and Schuster. And this is where Thomas breaks out the exacto knife. All right, I'm very happy to see this. This is the finished copy from Saga Press in hardcover of A Cathedral of Myth and Bone, and it is a new collection of 16 works of short fiction by Cat Howard, who
who wrote uh, An Unkindness of Magicians, and uh, a lot of these stories just sound really, really fascinating. Uh, a woman being written into her boyfriend's fiction is at first flattered to be his muse, but then finds her real life literally consumed and overtaken by his. A desperate young woman makes a prayer to the saint of the sidewalks, but the miracle she rece receives isn't what she expected. A painter spies a naked man crouched by the cathedral of St. John the Divine, transform into a beautiful white bird, and decides to paint him and becomes involved in his curse. Another woman, a duelist and a sacred blade for God and her holy saints, finds that the price of truth is always blood. And in the novella Once Future, Howard reimagines the Arthurian romance as a story that is told and retold again on a modern college campus until the ending is right. Fascinating. All right, then. Um, I'm looking forward to digging into these, but A Cathedral of Myth and Bone is available now in hardcover from Saga Press. And this one is from Random Penguin. I love how nobody even questions anymore that I call Penguin Random House Random Penguin. You know why? Because that's who they are. That is who they always will be to those of us in the SFF 180 family, right? Okay. <laughs> and this is the finished copy and hardcover of Sisters of the Fire by Kim Wilkins. Comes out February the 5th. This is the sequel uh, to a book called Daughters of the Storm, and it was basically about five sisters. One of them was a warrior, another is a magician, the lover, it says, the zealot, and the gossip. <laughs> okay. Uh, but anyway, they all banded together to sort of protect their father's throne, as it were. And now this is the continuation of their adventures. And uh, yeah, I'd kind of like to, to get into these, because this is, again, one of the not quite being as buzzed as many other fantasy novel series uh, kind of books out there, and so it'd be nice to sort of check it out and see what it's all about. But uh, February the 5th, from Delray Books in hardcover, Sisters of the Fire by Kim Wilkins. Getting close to the bottom of the stack, you guys. Uh, this one from Random Penguin. Okay, if there's one thing that I absolutely love about doing Mailbag Monday and doing this channel is that it is true, most of the books that I get in the mail I am kind of expecting in one way or another, but every once in a while something will turn up utterly unexpected, and uh, it's a new discovery, and I'm thrilled about that. And this appears to be one of those books, because I had, like, no inkling of the existence of this until this minute. Uh, this is from Vintage Books, so it's mainly lit fic, but it's a novel called Same Same. And the author is Peter Mendelssohn. Comes out February the 5th. And the premise is this. What if there were a shop that would hand you a replica of something even better than the original? What would you copy? How would it change you? In the shifting sands of the desert, near an unnamed metropolis, there is an institute where various fellows come to undertake projects of great significance. But when our sort of hero, Percy Frobisher, arrives, surrounded by the simulated environment of the glass-enclosed dome of the institute, his mind goes completely blank. After he spills something on his uniform, a major faux pas, he learns about a mysterious shop where you can take something and, by uttering the command, same, same, receive a perfect duplicate. Here, Peter Mendelssohn imagines a world in which simulacra have as much value as the real, so much so that any distinction between the two vanishes. This deeply unsettling novel, an homage to Thomas Mann's classic The Magic Mountain, investigates what it means to exist and to create, and journeys to a future that may not be far off. That's kind of fascinating. Sounds like it's, uh, you know, asking us to think about, like, the value of anything original and new and unique in the world, if, if anything can just sort of be mass-produced or, or duplicated at whim or what have you, or if it's just, you know, just something that can be whipped out of a printer or something like that. You know, what's the value of something that's truly a labor of love, you know, by heart and hands and things like that? That's fascinating. Okay. Um, I, I will probably try to read this very soon because, you know, I like the idea. Same, same. Uh, by, oh, did something duplicate? I can't tell. Well. I'll be careful. Anyway, uh, comes out February the 5th from Vintage Books. Let me know in the comments. And now we're down to the last two, and these are the two boxes I mentioned. So this one is from Random Penguin. Well, alrighty then. This is awfully nice to have. This is an arc from Daw Books for Empire of Grass. And it's the next book by Tad Williams and his massive uh, The Last King of Austin Ard fantasy series, which is a follow-up to the Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn Theory, th the Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn Theory, Thufferin Thuckatash. And, um, all right then, this, uh, this will be available May the 7th. So is, like, between now and May the 7th enough time for me to read, like, 
four or five, you know, phone book sized fantasies to get caught up and review this on time. I'll, I'll try. I'd like to do that. Uh, but anyway, wow. Well, here you go, uh, Tad Williams fans. Uh, it is on the horizon. Empire of Grass. And then this last one is from Simon & Schuster. I mean, like, looks awfully huge, but it doesn't weigh much. So we'll see what's in it. <laughs> okay, I guess, I don't know. I guess they ran out of mailers or something like that, because this is the only thing that was in that massive box. And it's Vultures. It's the new book by Chuck Wendig in the Miriam Black series, which I believe has been optioned for television, I think. Uh, but anyway, I, I can't really give uh, any too spoilery... Uh, you know, a synopsis of this one, but, you know, memory, uh, Miriam Black has the ability to essentially uh, uh, foresee when people are going to die, and, um, and she helps people solve their problems, I guess, that way. But, yeah, Vultures is coming out soon, or maybe out already, from Saga Press in hardcover. And there you have it. That is it. That is the contents of the first really nice big mailbag of the year. Awesome. Okay, you guys know the drill. Light up those comments. Let me know which of these looks most interesting and exciting to you, which you would like to see me prioritize for review. Otherwise, if you enjoyed watching, please hit that like button, share the video far and wide with all of your SFF reading friends, and above all, please subscribe if you have not done so. That is how the channel grows, inching towards 6K this week. Very exciting. And you can also support the channel at my Tee Public store and at my Patreon. Where recruits into Wink's army get little perks like getting to see some of these videos early. I want to thank those awesome folks for their additional added support. It's amazing, very helpful. Thank you so much. And I want to thank all of you guys for being the very best viewers in all of BookTube. So, until I see all of you next time, happy reading.